Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included Spaced Out DLC. In today's episode we wanna take care of our CO2 problem and maybe move a couple of things into the steam room. You can see we have so much CO2 available to us, I doubt we're gonna be able to ever use everything of it, but I'd rather have it stored away somewhere instead of getting rid of it. I was kind of thinking of adding an additional room on top of here. This can be fairly big and we're just gonna completely fill it up with 20 kilograms of carbon dioxide per tile. Considering we only have like 2 kilograms everywhere, we can get this 10 times smaller. And then once we have this stored away, we can still think about getting rid of the excess. Now I just saw my slickster seem to be gone. I wonder what happened to them. Me ah okay, it was actually maybe too low of a temperature here. Could be that they just died off. Anyways, let's think about how we want to accomplish this. I think I'm just going to exchange this entire row here. And then I want to go up a couple of levels. So we could go ahead and reserve all of this for our CO2 room. I think this would be sufficient space for the time being. I will in the future make a compression system, but I want this to be a permanent setup and I don't know where exactly it goes. So we're going to go with a makeshift solution until then. But yeah, I guess for now I'm just gonna be happy with something like this. I also want to make sure we can actually reach the top of this. Uh, actually, maybe we just expand the ladder system this way. This could also be a solution. Now currently we still have gases in here and I believe we can go ahead and change this if we just have something set up like this so everything can dissipate into space. That also means we might want to wait with the ceiling there. And naturally another thing I'm going to require is a liquid lock right here. So let's get rid of this part. We can set up the liquid lock making sure the gases remain in there. Wonderful. Time to unpause I would say. On our second planetoid we're actually back down to zero kilograms of dirt. I don't want to waste the dirt anymore on this. We currently have way more than enough omelets from the looks of it. 80 kilograms of omelets. I mean that's pretty good I would say, so I'm just gonna get rid of my farms for the time being. Can I just disable this? Now I guess we're just gonna go ahead and uproot everything actually. This theoretically also means I don't need my cook in this world at all. This guy could go into the main world or maybe even to Max's planetoid. But yeah, that is a thing to worry about in the future. I'm now gonna go ahead and speed up this contraption. I want everyone to actually focus on this one and get that stuff built ASAP. We're gonna set up a bottle emptier right here, fill it up with water, should be good. The CO2 shouldn't be too hot. And maybe in this case, another thing we can do is continue the CO2 gas pipe and already lead it into the room. Then as mentioned, the second topic is going to be to move a couple of things, mainly the glass forge because it is producing way too much heat inside of the base. Of course that makes sense if we are dealing with 1700 degrees sand. So I thought one solution would be to expand the steam room downwards. I would have to set up a couple of airflow tiles here. So condensing water cannot drip down even though at the moment I don't believe we're ever gonna get back to the water stage. But what I would like to see here is a couple of refineries, maybe three pieces and then we can also have a glass forge or two. Until we have need of this setup though, I'm just gonna go with one machine each. The most important part is that we have enough Atmo suit docks in order to lead multiple duplicates into this room. This is going to include a liquid lock, which unfortunately means we also have to reroute the power cable. But we can easily do that and uh, actually the liquid lock needs to be wide enough. So let's say we want four Atmo suits and then the docking station and only after that we can have the liquid lock, which theoretically means I need to move the refinery. That's gonna suck. I oh know, I'm really not looking forward to this. I mean, it would be easy to move, but all the liquid inside and then it just hurts so much. You know, in this case, I might want to start building from this spot and we're gonna start our adventures with the glass forge. Now, I believe this can be built out of ceramic, which also has a plus 200 degrees overheat temperature. That's of course important for our steam room. So let's see, glass forge can go right here, for instance, and that also means we are pumping the materials towards the left. So the glass would drop right here and then hopefully at a reasonable time cool down to the 200 degrees steam temperature maximum. Considering we don't need a lot of glass overall in the game, I'm just gonna leave it at one. And that means the next one would be our refinery setup with the shut off. Oh, actually we don't even need the shut off anymore. We only need one shut off for all the refineries. 
Ooh, this actually means we can set up a whole bunch of them. Oh, I almost forgot. This also needs to be built out of ceramic. And this actually uses up all our ceramic, which means we need to build a little bit more of it. Ceramic, I have plenty of materials. We need eight crafts in order to build one refinery. Let's maybe do 32 crafts. I'm not sure how many refineries I want to have running in the end. But yeah, I'm guessing in the beginning I'm gonna set up like two more. In the meantime, my duplicants are still building eagerly the CO2 chamber. Hopefully nobody gets trapped. No, actually they can get out of here, even though it's not very convenient. The bottle emptier is actually already in place, so we want to fill this up with water as soon as possible so that the gases can all go out into space and theoretically they shouldn't be able to fill up the room again. Uh, but I'm not sure, this might be a very slow option. Oh, it looks like we're completely full on water again. That is intriguing. Yeah, we have to use up the water a little bit quicker. And look at them not working and setting up sticker bombs. These little slackers. Oh no, something really bad is actually happening here. Why is the temperature so cold in this place? Okay, I guess it's gonna be easily influenceable. Influenceable? Anyways, it's gonna be easily changed because there are only micrograms of gases in here. But we could run into a slight issue with the water. Now everything has already solidified. <gasps> Ashcan, you need to go to bed. What is happening? Yeah, there we go. Ashcan, go to bed. Everyone else seems to be okay. Yeah, I think what I had to do is actually sweep up all the materials here. That is definitely gonna help so the water doesn't freeze as quickly. You know, I have to admit, I feel much more relaxed since we brought Max back. There's only one other planetoid to take care of. Both of these guys are actually idle, so maybe we should have a look at them and tell them to do some more stuff. Like we could finish sticking up everything on the planetoid and then they can also bring over more materials. Oh, what's happening here? Is this... No, that's just obsidian. But anyways, keep on digging, keep on digging, please. Oh no, there are just too many things I cannot dig at the moment. Yeah, I might actually send Turner back at some point to help out with the digging part. But until then, we can dig up what we can dig up, which is nothing. Jeez. Yeah, check this out. The gases are now actually going away. We're losing like one microgram per second, which is a lot, considering we only have below 70 micrograms left. I started building the top ceiling and I just noticed we only have carbon dioxide left in this room. So this actually went much quicker than I first anticipated. That means we can go ahead and finish the room. Glassforge is already in place and I just noticed that obviously I need to put the refinery one block to the left. I don't want the molten glass to land on the metal refinery. We also have more materials for ceramic. So we're gonna set up like three metal refineries. And I believe overall three are gonna do the trick. I'm not gonna need more. This means we're gonna move our setup here with the liquid shut off. And I wanna make sure this is built out of steel though. The thermosensor should be good with just copper. Gonna need some automation wire here. And what else do we need? The power. So we wanna just expand this to all of our machines right there. And then it should eventually go through the liquid lock. This also means we can get rid of a couple of pipes and it should then first go down at this spot right here through the new setup. And then it's gonna join back with the loop. Yeah, let's get rid of a couple of pipes here before we actually do that. Nails, why did you have to build this from the top down? This just doesn't make any sense. Oh well, I'm gonna give you a spot to move back down. But I'm not happy with you, let me tell you that. Some glass coming from the printing pot, gladly taking that. We're gonna go ahead and empty out all the pipes that we can in this contraption and then slowly but surely we can move everything. I wonder what happens if I take the metal refinery apart. Hopefully everything inside of it is gonna be bottled up, otherwise it's just gonna drop down, which is not that much of an issue. Ah, no, there we go. It actually gets bottled up. Wonderful. This also means we can keep on building with our pipes, and what we want to do is go into each of the refineries from the input of the liquid shutoff. Considering we have to build a bridge here, yeah... That is actually gonna... No, that's not gonna be an issue. I can just do that, for instance, and that should work out. And then we can have a bridge from each of the refineries. We might want to wait building this one because we need a ladder in order to build the upper pipes. Oh no, Nails is trapped again. You're such... I... Nails! Well, if you get stressed now, it's your responsibility. There we go. Room is completed. We can now take apart this wall and then I guess we can start pumping. Why hasn't anyone built this pressure vent yet? Okay, but things are slowly but surely coming along. We just want to complete the room with the insulated tiles. 
Wait, I just noticed they can build four tiles high. What was I thinking? Don't need the ladders. Beautiful. Now we can also build a proper liquid lock with tons of Atmos suits. I'm just gonna go with... Um, let's assume we're gonna add another machine here eventually. So I would say maybe five Atmo suits. That's one, two, three, four, five. Then the Atmo suit dock. And after that, we can set up the liquid lock. This also means my power wire would go something like this, then down and join up with you. By the way, we should be completely done here. So I'm just gonna hook this up and then, well, they need to finish the piping first. But that should now get rid of our CO2 problem and also the high pressure in the base. Okay, we're actually getting there. I just noticed we can only have four Atmo suit docks, but if I want to have enough space here, I need four tiles at least for another contraption. I guess four docks are still gonna do the trick. I don't think we're ever gonna have all duplicates working in there. But what we definitely want is some petroleum here. We have already some hanging around. This should actually be enough in order to complete this liquid lock. And then we're also gonna set up a couple of pumps. Actually, for this tiny room, one pump might just be enough in order to get rid of the excess gases here. And this should... Yeah, it's already hooked up to the power. Great. How is it going on the top? They have completed the pipes, which means my excess carbon dioxide is now moving into this space. So I guess eventually I would like to have my pump set up here, which means we're gonna bring in the carbon dioxide from somewhere else. We might just wanna go ahead and do something like this. Uh, or do I wanna go down? Yeah, that is a little bit of a question. I think I'm just gonna move it over here in preparation for the future. That also means we need another set of ladders. And that also means I can get rid of the old setup right there. So we're gonna lose a little bit of carbon dioxide, no problem. But it essentially means we will be able to get rid of all these gas reservoirs since we will have it stored in this space instead. And that reminds me, additional to the 20 kilograms we can have per tile in this room, we can also set up the gas reservoirs to store even more. Maybe we're gonna go ahead and set this up right away. We can have like four or five. Yeah, let's just do four. But yeah, we can just keep on expanding our piping system. You know what? I have a better idea. I first want to fill up the room and then the gas reservoir. So what we're going to do is put this one block up here. So my high gas pressure vent is going to go there instead. This also means the room itself has the priority and only after that it's going to go into the gas reservoirs. And this also means I can have five gas reservoirs because I can move it one over. The pump is in place. It's pumping it out. However, nobody's taking care of the bottle empty here. I upped the priority a bit. Wonderful. This should already be sealed off now. Also, I just noticed I will have to lead the wire from down below. Otherwise, it's not going to supply my Atmo suits. I just got gifted another snazzy suit. I totally forgot to give this to people. Let's give Camille one. And there is another one that I'm going to give to Turner right there. He deserved it. Another thing I don't want to think about anymore is this liquid tepidizer. It should just turn on whenever the water is below 15 degrees. If the sensor is below 15 degrees, it's not going to send out a signal. So all we have to do is set up a NOT gate like so. Some automation wire and then connect this to the liquid tepidizer. E easy enough. Should have done this from the beginning. There we go. Looks like we can start setting up our liquid gas reservoirs. I'm just going to start with a row here at the bottom. But you see, we will have tons of space for the carbon dioxide now. Just gonna make sure these are all connected to the reservoirs. And then I guess we don't need the output just yet. On the other side, why actually wait with the output? I might want to lead this all the way through here. Wait, is this enough space? Did I make a mistake with... Yeah, this is only three high. I made a ladder mistake, apparently. Let's see, I would like to do this properly. So I'm gonna set up... Oh no, this is so bad. We need another row right there. One, two, three, four. And then another row here, which also means this is wrong. We need another layer on top of this, probably. Yeah, so this entire thing should be one level higher. This also means we have to change our ladder setup. Oh, man, how could this happen to me? Mistakes like these really bother me. Anyways, all of the outputs of the gas reservoir is gonna go into that direction. I could build this out of normal pipes. But I think I just want to keep it insulated. Anyways, the output is going to the left and then all the way up and eventually to our rocket setup. In the meantime, the room here at the bottom is finished building. And it looks as though we already have enough petroleum in the joint. I'm gonna deconstruct this. 
One more thing we're gonna need is the output pipe right there of the molten glass. And then it's gonna drop down here at the bottom. It's gonna drop on the conductive wire. Let's actually check something here. Ah, melting point is a thousand degrees. That could indeed be an issue and I don't really want to risk anything. So I think I'm gonna leave the wire on the top there. I mean, it's gonna cool down very quickly, but it might not be as efficient as with a water pool. Wonderful. Looks like we're slowly but surely getting rid of the carbon dioxide. I want to make sure that no new carbon dioxide is being introduced into these gas reservoirs. Well, we are definitely slowly getting there. I think I'm gonna set up the atmosuit docks now. They already have the power. We just need to lead the oxygen in there. No problemo. This also means we're gonna need four additional atmo suits. Uh, actually, I do not have the materials for that. Yeah, we need to build it out of iron, for instance, or aluminium. Wow, looks like I completely ran out of refined materials in the meantime. But yeah, as soon as this room is pumped out, I'm gonna exchange this row here with airflow tiles. And then one other thing I noticed is we emptied all of our gas reservoirs. So this system can now go. Feels good. You go, you go, you go, you go, you go, you go. I just noticed the sensor is a pipe sensor. I should exchange this with a normal sensor. Or another thing we can do is exchange this with a granite pipe. I think that might be the easier solution. So the temperature inside of the pipe is getting closer to the temperature of the water much quicker. Atmosuit docks are built. I'm just gonna go ahead and deliver the suits now. In the meantime, I'm waiting for the last gases to be pumped out of the room. Now, before we enable the metal refinery setup, I want to test the glass forge and see how much of the environment is being heated up. Because it might very well be that we still need to drop them into liquid such as petroleum. And that would naturally mean I have to move my entire setup again. There it is. We finally achieved a vacuum. Oh man, it always takes a while with just one pump. But we can now get rid of this setup, that's good. And we can start exchanging these tiles, however, with airflow tiles. So, hmm. I'm actually gonna wait for my suits to be delivered. What is happening with those? Yeah, they're just laying here on the floor. Please guys, take care of it. But all of this should be airflow tiles. It could be that initially we get a little bit of water in the joint because of course the tiles are being built in a cool state. And yeah, there we go. Therefore converting the steam back into water. All the machines will now have to be heated up to the proper temperature. This would be devastating for the glass forge as we've explored in one of the previous episodes. Alright, very good. I think I accomplished what I wanted to do in today's episode. We took care of the CO2 problem. It's still gonna take a while to pump everything out, of course. But we shouldn't be too much in a hurry anymore. For the most part because the petroleum generators, which were the culprit of producing so much carbon dioxide shouldn't be activated anymore. I only have them now as an emergency measure. Then I still need to wait for this room to heat up a little bit. It's already getting a little bit warmer. You can see the water is at 96 degrees. So soon enough, it's going to be converted into steam again. And then in the next episode, we will be able to test everything out. We will then also expand everything to have these gas reservoirs on the top. This means we can store a lot of carbon dioxide and then finally automate a rocket. I feel like Max's planet could use some automation. You know what? The more I'm thinking about it, the more I want to swap this around a little bit. We could, for instance, bring down the liquid reservoir into this spot. This would then leave us two spaces where we can move the entirety of this machinery over. And therefore, we should have the space to set up a tiny puddle for the molten glass. I'm actually kind of fond of this idea, so I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. We will have to lead the liquid pipe over, but first of all, we will have to swap the reservoir again. So first things first, build me another reservoir, please. There it already is, beautiful. Oh man, we are accumulating lots of water here, not happy about that. And now, yeah, basically I have to move everything again, but it's going to be worth it. We want as good as a setup as is possible. I'm sorry guys, you have to go again. I have to move you slightly. Also have to move the liquid vent there. And we're going to set up a little something here to contain a tiny pool of petroleum. I will also move the entirety of the power wire upstairs. So all of this here at the bottom can also go. I'm gonna get myself a bottle emptier in the joint. Yeah, this should work out. We just need to make sure that the water is getting out of there somehow. Okay then, setting up three refineries and this way we use up the space almost optimally, I would say. This reservoir is already empty. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. We then wanna extend the radiant pipe one block. Also more power wires, please. We're getting there, guys. 
We're gonna do the same thing with the piping as we did previously. So this should be connected and then we get out of here, bridge over and bring it back into the loop. So right there, there and there. And then this should just continue like so. Uh, hold on. No, that was a lie. It should not continue like so. What it is supposed to do is go up like that. Right here, of course, this is the output of our glass forge. Okay, wonderful. That's already in place. Considering we have water in the joint right here, I might be able to just convert it back into steam by crafting a couple of pieces of glass. We're gonna try that out. There we go. Max is actually already going for it. Now, theoretically, what should happen is we now get a little bit of pipe damage on the first output pipe because the glass forge is touching the water. Yeah, there we go. That's what I thought. Some cold damage. And that is going to be the case until we have converted this back into steam. But after that, we should be fine. And look at that. This is actually working phenomenally. I can live with repairing this for a little while. Oh, look at that. It's actually already converted. This is so perfect. So all we need is a little bit of petroleum in the joint now. Let's actually quickly check the temperatures here. So what is happening? This is only 100 degrees. But now that we are getting this molten glass. Ooh, this actually converted quickly. Yeah, we might not have needed the petroleum. But I think it's just kind of an extra layer of security. In the meantime, we're actually done with this setup. Let me just make sure. Yeah, that seems to be correct. The loop is working, going back into the reservoir. So we can connect this theoretically and it should start filling up our refineries. Oh, there we go. I actually overfilled this. Ah, this is like really bad. No, actually, this might be advantageous to us. Now we only have a tiny amount of petroleum here that we should be able to sweep up. So mopping tool and I can sweep this up. This is easy peasy. I could also sweep up the water though. The question is, do I really want to? Because I want a certain density of steam in this room. Yeah, never mind. This really didn't help us at all. Oh no, building is actually flooded. Let's maybe craft some copper that could help us out. Gonna craft 50 pieces of copper and I'm also gonna craft 50 pieces of iron, at least with the ones that aren't considered flooded yet. We are at 98.5 degrees. I just need to raise this maybe another 5 degrees and we should have no water issues anymore. Max is crafting for me and we can see the system is actually working. That's great. We might not have enough petroleum in our liquid reservoir now. So maybe that's another thing we will have to fix. But right now it should heat up the steam room again and as a result we will also get more temperature at the bottom. That's what I'm talking about. This is now finally going to be a proper setup. Oh, Kimmel, that's what I like to see. It could be a slight problem because the material is actually coming out rather cold at 55 or so degrees, therefore also keeping the water from heating up quicker. But we're definitely getting some more temperature here, already above 130 degrees. But yeah, my point is this is still going to take a little while. So I think with that out of the way, we can actually leave the game running for a little bit. We also seem to be still doing good with the carbon dioxide. Let's actually have a look at that. Uh, it still hasn't really improved. But yeah, we're now working on it. I don't worry too much. Great, with that out of the way, let's wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.